What's your name? Where are you from? And where are you here today? Uh, my name is Nas. Uh, I'm from uh, Vegas, and I'm here to work today, I guess. And what do you think of President Trump bombing Syria over this past weekend? Uh, it was uh, it, it wasn't needed. It was uh, what you call uh, un something that he should have done. It was unpredictable, and it was uh, un I, I would say selfish. Um, you know, that's what I want to say. Something like that. So what do you think of the justification for the attack? It doesn't sway you at all to think that there were 42 people killed by a chemical weapons attack in Syria? I mean, I mean if there was, then I, 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 then the, the attack was right, but there was no proof. I, like, I didn't, like, the whole thing is that uh, what what's making me mad is that, like, where's the, pro where's the proof? You know what I'm saying? That, that he really did that, you know, because Assad was winning the war, so I, I, I think... Uh, he was winning the war against the uh, the terrorists in in there. So him uh, to bomb his own uh, to gas his own people. I, I don't. I think that would be that was that was a that would be a dumb decision for him to do. So if there was proof, though, you would have supported it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And why is that? I mean, because uh, innocent people are getting killed. You know, so uh, if uh, we can get go, uh, get there and help, then you know, that uh, that'll be cool. You know. So do you think that when the uh, the U.S. military intervenes like this? that it's going to help the situation in Syria? I mean, it's not really going to help the situation. I mean, but but what they said was they just uh, bombed the chemical, whatever you call them. They, they, they didn't bomb, like, they didn't hurt any civilians or anything like that. But other than that, I don't think you can you could fight fire with fire, you know? So. But that's just what you're advocating. You're advocating, if, if it was legitimate, yeah. I mean, for example, like like 9/11, right? Do, do you what, what what's your take on what happened on 9/11? Uh, Bush did. Oh, <laughs> Bush. All right. So so you're but see so you're already on this point of understanding that that most of the excuses for war yeah. are fabricated, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Oil and everything like that. Yeah. So I think uh, they use that in order to invade countries and stuff like that. So yeah. So what criteria would you apply? that would make it justified for the United States to intervene in, in a foreign military action like like if there was proof of chemical weapons or something like that? Hmm. I never really thought about that. But, uh... See, that's the kind of problem, right? That's what I want to get at here. That's that's what I think is really the, the important issue to explore here because do, do you know if his intervention in Syria is constitutional or not? No. I don't think so, no. Well, it's not because the, co the Congress didn't declare war and authorize the military action, right? Correct. And according to the Constitution, Congress has the sole power to declare war. Mm -hmm. And it's a, the mechanism by which it's built in is supposed to be so that that military force is only used for defensive purposes when the United States is attacked. So was the U.S. attacked in Syria? No, they weren't, atta they weren't attacked at all. I don't think they were attacked, no. So, uh... No, not at all. So it sounds like it wouldn't be justified even if there was proof, right, that, that the United States should stay out of it, even if there was proof that Assad gassed his own people. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, now that you bring that up, yeah, so I, I actually thought about it, and yeah, you're right. I mean, what's called, um, I think the U.S. should uh, mind their own business and stay out of it, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate you taking the time to consider that and get to a deeper level of understanding. You know, I was in the military. I was in Iraq in 2004, and I really wish at the time that the American people had a better perspective like this to understand that it's unconstitutional, it's unjustified. If Iraq didn't attack the United States, we shouldn't be involved. And the more we apply this principle consistently, the less we're going to find ourselves in situations like we have ongoing in Afghanistan and Iraq today, and even in Syria where now you know, the United States has been involved in many covert ways, funding rebel groups through the CIA and the State Department. And that's, that's why we're at the point where we're at today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what do you think is the lesson learned from this? The lesson learned from what Trump did and stuff like that? Or uh, I guess the lesson is like, uh, don't be a sheep, I guess. You know, uh, look into everything before you believe what is said on the news and stuff like that because one i think the news is uh there's a lot of fake stuff being being said on the news so i think you should uh, uh really uh look into everything and just don't be a sheep and uh taking everything you hear question everything should you trust government no
<laughs> That's the right answer. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Today. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.